How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. We got a lot of news to get into here today. I was gone yesterday. I don't know what Semper Vivi said yesterday, but I was busy tending to my child as I returned from California. But I am here today, everybody, and here for the foreseeable future. I don't think I'll be gone again until StarCast weekend, which is over a month from now. So we'll be there for StarCast, myself and Dave Meltzer. I got a show that Friday for Ed, facing the brother of Marco Stunt, Young Logan. Black Label Pro the week after. But in the meantime, I am here nonstop until then. And there's a lot of news to talk about today. We got Raw tonight. The Money in the Bank competitors are going to be revealed. We're still about three weeks away from Money in the Bank, but they're going to tell us who's going to be in the men's and women's Money in the Bank ladder matches. And I do know that there have been some names that have been floating around, and I'm not saying that the list of names floating around is not correct, but what I'm going to say is that I've seen a few lists of names floating around, and the lists don't match. And so at least one set of names floating around is not the actual list, it's fake. Now, could also be that neither of the lists end up accurate because they're probably still working on the show right now. They may still be working on the show when the show starts. We're not going to know who is in Money in the Bank until they're announced for Money in the Bank. And quite frankly, with WWE, if you look at the superstar shakeup, I mean, they could announce names and then change them. But we're supposed to know tonight who is going to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match for the men and the women. Also announced, as I reported here on the show last week, they are doing a pay-per-view on June 23rd in Tacoma, Washington. It is a new pay-per-view, meaning they've given it a new name. It's called Stomping Grounds, which I guess dudes stomp, but Tacoma... Not the stomping grounds of WWE. If anything, it's it's my stomping grounds. Back in a moment with more Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. We'll talk about Jungle Boy later, but first off, since I've already got a bunch of emails about it, WWE pay-per-view officially set for Tacoma in June. The Tacoma Dome announced today they'll be hosting WWE stomping grounds on June 23rd. This will be the first time WWE uses Stomping Grounds pay-per-view name. Stomping Grounds. Tacoma is not WWE Stomping Grounds. Backlash was originally scheduled to take place in San Diego on June 16th, but it was canceled and replaced by Stomping Grounds. The June 16th event in San Diego, now a house show. It appears all of this was switched around to make room for what is expected to be a show in Saudi Arabia on June 7th. Whether that takes place, I guess we're still waiting. Tickets going on sale Friday, May 3rd at 10 a.m. for Stomping Grounds. Everett is hosting the June 24th episode of Raw. So I was wondering why they didn't run... It's a nice building in Everett. I guess they're getting Raw. The Tacoma Dome... I mean, I mean this in the nicest way possible. It's a dump. I don't ever need to go to Tacoma again. I mean that in the nicest way possible. But... Everyone's been emailing saying, why aren't they running the key arena? Why aren't they running the key arena? So the key arena is undergoing renovation. And I had been under the impression that renovation was starting in the fall. But I believe that it may already have started. The point of this is, I believe that the key arena is unavailable. And that's why they're there at the Tacoma Dome. So... A fun two days of action. The Tacoma Dome and then Everett. Two horrific... Cities that I am sandwiched in between. Wow. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. Of course you do. Of course the same do. way you were heckling the crowd with Jungle Boy, although I guess we'll get to that later on. Um, yeah, so that stadium, too, it's probably not going to be ready in time for the debut of your hockey team, which I know you're very excited about to come in a couple of years, which is why they're renovating that arena, the home of the Seattle Storm as well, too, of the WNBA, another one of your favorites there. But yeah, so they're doing that, which is why they're at the Tacoma Dome and, and everywhere else. But um, do, do you want to touch on the subject of Jungle Boy now, or no. do you want to wait till later? I got a lot of things I got to talk about. Oh, do you? Because you had a lot to talk about before that match, Would too, you right? shut up for a second? 
Go ahead. So, also, got to give an update on Brian Cage. We've got to talk about serious injuries here. Uh, Actually, there were two serious injuries. To, well, to your pride. I guess was one of them was not a serious injury. But, uh, so last night, first off, there was the one that everyone's heard about, which is Brian Cage. Brian Cage did a Spanish fly, and this is actually really ironic as I get into this here. Dan, uh, Brian Cage does a Spanish fly off the apron, and really, honest to God, I've seen like 50 stupider things probably this weekend than what he did. When On you're, that show. When you're the size of, of Brian Cage, I mean, the reality is you probably shouldn't be taking bumps off the apron to the floor. I mean, it's probably just for the best, but... All he had to do was like a flip bump off the apron to the floor. The other guy did the back flip. He just did a front flip. And he landed, and he jacked his back up. And he still had to keep working. And he had to finish the match in which he won the title. And then afterwards, he was confronted by Michael Elgin, who ended up laying him out with an Elgin bomb, which I'm sure felt great on his back. And he was just... The the term that I heard last night was he was effed. Yeah. So they <laughs> thrashed. <laughs> they took him to the hospital, and I don't know if he's actually seen a doctor. I mean, he saw whoever was at the hospital. I'm sure they did some sort of scan or whatever. But he was on busted open radio today, and he claimed that he had inflammation and a bone bruise. So at least he didn't suffer like a broken back or anything like that. But as of last night, they were figuring they were going to have to rewrite television. And the last I heard as of right before we went on the air is he is at the show tonight. He's at the tapings, but he's not going to be working. So he probably dodged a bullet there. I mean, I know that's one of his things is he's... He dodged a bullet for now. He's gigantic. Yeah. And he flies around. And that's awesome. It's a great gimmick. But when you're gigantic and you fly around, it's just, I don't know. Sometimes things like this happen. Now, what people are not talking about, and I'm not sure why somebody texted me this, last night on the show, there was another Spanish fly. Oh, yeah. It, inter- it, it involved Ray Phoenix, and Dumb. he did a Spanish fly off a ladder to put somebody through a table, but he didn't rotate off the top rope. Wait, and, and let's set this up properly here. This was a rope walk into a Spanish fly as a man stood on a ladder that he was going over the ropes with onto the ramp. He goes up in the air. He stops. Other guy rotates. He comes straight down. Could have broken his damn neck. Well, I don't think he broke his neck, but he didn't do anything the rest of the match. And apparently he was walking around after the show, but that's two Spanish flies. And one was the guy taking the move. One was the guy delivering the move. And in... Both cases, somebody got injured. Brian Cage is 35 years old, and he is large and carries a lot of weight around on that torso and a lot of pressure on that back. I I get it. He he, he does it because he can do it. It is an amazing visual. Good luck in 10 years. I I just... (laughs) And I, that's a lot of wrestlers, too. You know, I'm not just pointing him out. But, I mean, if he was roughed up going into this thing, which is what it sounded like from Dave and, and Garrett talking on Observer Radio, to take those type of risks to do that, I just, I, I why? You know, he didn't have to take that off the apron if his back was messed up. I mean, I know you want to give us our money's worth. I get that out of wrestlers, but... You know, anybody that uses that as the excuse, uses fancy excuse, well, i got to give them their money. Give me a break. <laughs> you know, give yourself and your family and us your money's worth, too, because what if your back goes out in the middle of the move? You know, it, and, and when it comes to Phoenix, it's just, I understand you got to do the can you top this because everybody's seen everything, so you always, okay, what, what can we do here? Nobody needed that. Like, it, yeah, it was spectacular, I guess. But, like, what anybody's going to remember, not, they're not going to remember anything else other than you almost killed yourself by coming down directly on your neck, and you see the referee and other people just recoil back in fear. So I got word that apparently he's okay, and I don't know how, but he's all right. No, there's all the excuse in the world to continue doing it, then. This person says, I flew from Canada to Seattle to attend Over the Limit 2012 just to watch CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan live, and I had so much fun. I still remember the facility in Key Arena was awesome. 
one of the best arenas in the U.S. How is the Tacoma Dome? Because I'm thinking about flying in again to Washington. Well, listen, if you want to see the show, fly to Washington. It's not like you're going to sit in a chair and a chair is going to break. But it is a 36-year-old building, and it's in Tacoma. I mean, I don't know what else you want me to tell you. The key arena is awesome. And when they renovate it, it's going to be even more awesome. But it's not going to be open until probably 2020 or 2021. So uh, you just have to come to Tacoma to watch the show. And like I said, I, I actually like the, the Everett building. So you could fly in and then go to Everett the next night. The Angel of the Winds Arena or something I think it's called now. The Angel of the Winds Arena. Well, there's an Angel of the Winds Casino. And ah, they that would be got why. the naming rights for the deal. Mm. So. so is there any like charm in that building at all? I mean, the Baltimore Arena slash Civic Center is... Literally sixty years old, or whatever the hell it is now, and it is a complete dump. But it is a it is a charming dump with history. Is there anything? Listen, that if there's anybody listening to this right now that can think of any charm to the Tacoma Dome, let me know. I got friends in Tacoma. I don't think anyone's going to point out any charm to the Tacoma Dome. And the I five right next to it is the worst stretch of I five, and the entire Seattle Tacoma area is horrific. It's terrible. Mm. Anyway, this person here says the Money in the Bank ladder match lineups are these according to local advertisements. Drew McIntyre, Cesaro, Ricochet, Rey Mysterio, Alistair Black, Andrade, Lars Sullivan, Mustafa Ali, Women's, Tamina, Sasha, Natalia, Naomi, Bailey, Ember, Carmella, and Sonia. Well, right there with Sasha on there. I mean, these advertisements were sent a while ago, and I would bet you, and it doesn't matter. But I would bet you that the lineups we get tomorrow are different from the lineups that are listed here. So there you go. Back in a moment with more Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. This person checked out Tessa versus Gail Kim last night. And he says, not only do I think it was the best match on the show, I think it may have been the best match in both Gail and Tessa's careers. Wow. There you go person here says, why all the hate for Lars Sullivan? Everything I've read online is hardly anything but negative feedback for WWE putting Lars and the Money in the Bank ladder match. Well, first off, I'm not certain that Lars is going to be in that match. In fact, my gut kind of tells me he's not going to be in that match. But you do realize that Lars Sullivan has been in a ladder match that was given five stars by the Wrestling Observer. It was that NXT TakeOver New Orleans ladder match. It was Adam Cole, EC3, Killian Dane, Lars, Ricochet, and Velveteen Dream. Five stars. That match was incredible. Some people on the internet don't understand wrestling. Uh, Money in the Bank ladder match is not all about small guys who can climb a ladder. You should have a giant dude that can catch people when they fall off the ladder. You should have a giant dude that can lift up ladders with people on it. You should have a giant dude that's going to throw people around and throw ladders around. There should be base. there should be a Lars Sullivan in this match. Yeah, and there's Kane no better Lars there Sullivan there. to be in the match than Lars Sullivan. That's true. Well, unless you're looking for, you know, somebody with experience. Again, this is why Kane and Big Show and guys like that, when they would end up in those matches, they were there to be launching pads into catch and to do exactly what you said there. So if it is Lars, then that's fine. I think when it comes to Lars Sullivan, he has had a reported history of, I guess, comments when he wasn't even involved in wrestling and when he was on message boards and bodybuilding forums and you know, it's the internet. So whether it, it's deserved or not, those comments are going to come back and haunt you. Some people just look at those and have now formulated everything they need to know about Lars Sullivan. He's canceled before he even begins. He's done. He's gone. And there are people like that as well, too, where it's not really about the work. It's about these other things. Impact is going to get this with Michael Elgin. That was a interesting move. They have guys there, whether it be Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan, which... If spitting is never involved in pro wrestling again, that would be fine, you know, when it comes to those two. But there are, you know, handfuls of people that just will draw ire online. Again, whether it's up to you, whether they deserve it or not, but Impact collecting some of these guys and using Michael Elgin, having him in the mix with Brian Cage is going to be a very interesting sociological play to see how this all plays out. Matt Farmer here. Tacoma Dome will be that will be half full at best. Well, yeah. It's actually a pretty big building. I think it seats like 21, 22,000. But let me tell you, they are not going to get 21 or 22,000 there. And this person here 
claims, here are the things working in Stomping Ground's favor. This I got here. First Tony WWE Alice named it. First WWE pay-per-view in the state of Washington since Over the Limit in 2011. Yeah, for some people that's a big deal, but they do come here. And, like, every time I go to a show locally, none of my friends are there. Like, the people I used to go to watch wrestling with locally, they just don't go to wrestling anymore. So I don't know if that's going to draw them in. Rising popularity of wrestling in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, it's rising popularity of non-WWE wrestling in the Pacific Northwest. Name brand recognition and relative closeness to Oregon. It has a shot, this person (laughs) says, to fill two-thirds. Well, we'll see. I think that's a little optimistic, two-thirds full. Now That's like 18,000, 19,000 people. And I assume people travel, obviously, out of, you know, if you're close to the border, you know, you're going to go to the place that's closest to you. But is is people driving and coming from Oregon that big of a thing? Because they, what, do they not go to Salem and Portland and things like that too often? When's the last time there was a pay-per-view in Portland or Salem? I don't know if there's ever been a pay-per-view in Salem. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, if looking at it that way from just the pay-per-view, I guess not. No, I, I would seriously doubt Salem. I would doubt Portland. I mean, for hell, they, for the longest time, they wouldn't even go into Oregon. Now, granted, it's been a long time now, but that didn't help the matters. Rebellion was awesome, I thought. Tessa versus Gale was my favorite match. I think their knockouts are my favorite women's division right now. I've got to change my flight to do both G1 and Slammiversary in July. That's right, Slammiversary is coming up in July, and they have announced... That will be taking place in Dallas, Texas, on the same weekend as the New Japan G1 Climax opening day. Mm. So they're going to be running on July 7th, and the opening day of the G1 is July 6th. So if you want to, you could fly down there and do New Japan and Impact back-to-back. So there you go, Slammiversary. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey, how are you? Not bad. I had What's a up? pair of questions for you if you got time. Yes. Uh, first, uh, any idea how long uh, Marty is uh, remaining with Ring of Honor as far as his contract? And then, two, anything uh, new on the AEW TV front? Well, I want to thank you very much for the call. As far as I know, his contract goes, I don't know if it's through the very end of the year. But at minimum, he's there through the fall, and it may be the end of the year. And AWTV, nothing. And there will be nothing until something is announced. But they're still signing people, and so they must feel that they've got something one way or the other. So maybe there will be an announcement sometime around StarCast, Double or Nothing. I don't know. I I know nothing about television. There's, There's no news. Let's go to the phones. You are on the air. What's going on? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tacoma. What are they going to do? Have uh, have Shane Strickland face Buff Bagwell? Hmm? Well, it is it is Shane Strickland stomping grounds, and uh, there was that very famous match in the Tacoma Dome with Buff Bagwell that uh, killed the WCW Invasion dead. Killed it. It was Buff Bagwell and Booker T. And here's a fun fact for everybody. As noted in Death of WCW, available at Amazon.com and fine retailers, they had considered doing Booker T versus Lance Storm, Mm -hmm. which would have been a significantly better match. And at the end of the day, I guess they decided that Buff Bagwell had a bigger name than Lance, and they went with Buff. Now, with that said... I believe even Lance himself has said it would not have made any difference if it would have been me instead. But I can tell you that when, when, when they did that match with Bagwell and Booker T and Vince saw that match, I mean, he was done. He was done with the WCW invasion. They had all sorts of things planned. They had, they had arenas that they were booking out, billed as Shane McMahon presents WCW Nitro. They had, it was all, the ball was rolling. And he took a big stick and he jabbed it and popped that ball, and that was the end of that. So there you go. History. Arn Anderson and Scott Hudson on commentary. Yeah, that didn't help either. It didn't at all, because as good as Scott Hudson was, he wasn't ready for that. And as great as Arn Anderson is as a wrestler, he was not there as a commentator. That's for sure. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? 
Hello, what's the plan with Bray Wyatt and how when's he going to return? Dude, he's been on television. They're going to do the Firefly Funhouse for, I, I would presume, several weeks, and then he'll debut, and we'll see if there's any difference in the ring. Is he a face, you think, or a heel? Uh, my, my, my strong speculation is that he's a heel. I want to thank you very much for the call. I mean, if you if you watch the Firefly Funhouse, I mean, he's he's a heel pretending to be a baby face. And by the way, uh, anybody notice what they edited out of the Firefly Funhouse? I'll give you all a few minutes to try and figure it out. They re-aired I, it on SmackDown and they edited something out. Anyone know? I know it, I'd guess. What was it? Uh, I would assume, would it be the chainsaw? Nope. Huh, okay. Yep. I'll give you all the answer here in a moment. Hmm. To the phones, you're on the air. What's going on? Hey, Brian. Hey, Mike. This is Bruce in Huntsville. I just wanted to call in and get a quick, uh, fun, quote-unquote, in quotation marks, exercise. Um, let's say for a minute we're, we're going to, just as an example, use Brian's, or what I can get, at least favorite wrestler, Baron Corbin. And let's say that he enters Money in the Bank and wins it. Um how would you guys turn around his career and turn him from, you know, undercard, stable leading laughing stock to Ugh. an actual good wrestler? You want to know my, my actual answer? And Mike can do it. He doesn't win money in the bank. He goes away. He vanishes. He's taken off television for like six months. And when he comes back, he's, he doesn't have to grow his hair back. But he's he's got to have his actual gear back, take off the stupid outfit, and and come back as is more of the lone wolf, and not be not be pushed so hard into every single main event. Somebody went and did a breakdown of of the first to third hour drops over the last I can't remember if it was like four or six months or whatever to find out like who was actually turning off the audience, and Baron Corbin does in fact run off the audience, and unfortunately. A lot of people aren't going to want to hear this, but oftentimes the women run off the audience with three exceptions. And you'll never guess who the... I'm afraid to even say who the three exceptions are. (laughs) Rhonda, Charlotte, and Becky. Those are the three women that if you put them in the main event segment on Raw, they're going to basically do as well as the men do. But if you put any other women in that position... More fans turn off the television before the main event and Baron Corbin. So, to me, he's just got to go away for a while. He's got to do a Bray Wyatt. He's got to vanish and come back and start over again because he's he's way too damaged right now. Said it before, I'll say it again. He doesn't even need to go away for that long. He just needs to be put in a, posi- a better position where he's not a feature singles player in the main event. He is a guy who's used as a weapon and we've seen it with Big Bubba Rogers and Big Boss Man. You can have clothes on, even though it looks wonky. If they don't like his body, fine. Update his gear somehow like they did Boss Man's. Figure out a way to do it. Make him a, a piece that you can use as a hitman. Back in a moment, Observer Live. So there are two angles of Ray Phoenix landing on his head. And apparently in the first angle, it looks like he killed himself. And in the second angle, you can see that actually he didn't kill himself. So I guess that's why awesome. he's, he's walking around today. Well, everyone, uh, listen, if you want to see the Jungle Boy match, it has been released by All Pro Wrestling. Unleashed oh, it. is a better term. Uh-huh. It is stickied on the top of my Twitter right now, at Brian Alvarez. You can go up there and watch it. And, of course, I've been I've been trolled all day by different people here. Hamish says, Brian, how can you disappoint me losing a Jungle Boy? That little kid made you tap. I'm disgusted. That little kid. This person says, Brian, you lost a Jungle Boy. A boy. Shame. Guess who's getting Geek of the Year on Filthy Four Daily? (laughs) (sighs) Yeah? Dude, first off, yeah, he's young, but he is bigger than I am. Oh, he is. I was unaware of that when I went out there. Uh-huh. He's he's definitely taller. He doesn't have my musculature, of course, mm. but he's he's taller, and I I'm I'm pretty sure that he outweighs me. Your upper body is looking good. I'll give it that. You know, your lower body maybe you need to work on because you wouldn't have had to like lose all of your breath getting punched out by a child. Would you shut up, Mister Alvarez? This person is a fan. Great match with the Jungle Boy on Saturday. Even though you were wrongfully embarrassed at the end, promise me you will take your revenge someday. Well, 
I think everyone's well aware that Jungle Boy signed All Elite Wrestling. So, I mean, there's a there's a fairly decent chance that, in fact, I will never get my revenge. Because I'm not going to All Elite Wrestling. No national promotions. So, this may have been my one and only chance, and I, I am disappointed to have failed. But, I do have other matches coming up, including with Logan Stunt over Double or Nothing Weekend. And I, I assure you that I will take out my frustrations, of which I have an abundance, on Logan Stunt. So I hope that he is prepared for this. He can bring his Taekwondo black belt. I mean, quite frankly, we found out what good a black belt does this past yeah. Saturday night. Yeah, that's the amazing part Hey, here will you shut too. up? Listen, no, anybody... Well, Mr. Jits, explain that. I'll explain that to you. i got to skip As, as anybody who's done any jujitsu is well aware. Mm-hmm. Anybody can get caught. It's not magic. I had the guy in a choke, and he ran me to the buckle, and my arms loosened up a little bit, and he put me in a hold that in 15 years I have never seen. I have Wait never seen that in jujitsu. I've never seen that in professional wrestling. Have you what? ever seen that hold? I'll tell you. The answer is no. You haven't it's... seen that hold. What? Nobody has you... seen that hold. It was not. It was not a twister. It was not an octopus. It was something he calls a mushroom hold. Because the announcers explain, what did they say? It was, it's called the mushroom hold because it beats everything or something like that? I don't even know what they're talking about. Are we talking about, like, from Super Mario Brothers? What does that kid know about Super Mario Brothers? That game was in antique stores before he was born. But anyway, the point of this is, anybody can get caught at any time. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing anything. If you're an MMA fan, you know this. Things happen. I got caught. Mm. I won't get caught again. Yeah, you look like an infant falling off his mother's back, and then he just completely fathered you like the the, the son that you are by putting you in essentially a full Nelson. That's what that was. Yeah, I got to protect my neck. Got a long life ahead of me. First says, you tapped out to an abdominal stretch. It wasn't an abdominal stretch. It was whatever that mushroom hold was. It was a stretch with a full Nelson. I've never even seen it before. Mm. I don't even know what it is. They should have been disqualified for using yeah. that hold. It's your mushroom turtled back or, inside of you as you slunk back to the locker room. Exactly as Bobby Heenan said during the Ric Flair Mr. Perfect match from 1992 or whatever on Raw. Like, the rule should be that if the guy's arm drops twice, it's over. Not three times. Come on. Oh, by the way, yeah, I heard everything. Everybody heard that show with Dave. Uh, it was I replayed it yesterday for everyone to hear too. You've already got your excuses planned. You're saying you didn't submit at all. Mexican submissions don't count in the state of California. I didn't tap. Huh? It's right there in 1080p, 60 frames per second. There is no tap. Verbally anyway, submitted. If you want to watch the match, everybody, it's available on my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. Head up there and check it out. As Fine well job as by Kevin Gill on commentary. I don't know who that other shill was that you were paying to, to speak nicely about you. YouTube. It's available on YouTube. It's on my Facebook. So you can't miss it, everybody. Go check it out. If you want to, if you want to pile on, may as well. It's your one chance. Yeah, well, Marco's brother will. That's for sure. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? This is Jim from Virginia. How y'all doing? Today? Hello, Jim. Hey, How are uh, you doing? Oh, pretty good. Uh, Talking about your match the other night with the Jungle Kid. Yeah. Um, exactly, this kid uh, punched you. Was it an older kid or, or a younger kid or what? He, what, what, huh? What? The child in the audience. Oh, that I mean, kid? Was he like a teenager? Uh, he's, huh? he's 19, 20 years old, this Jungle Boy. Oh, but the, the kid that hit you. Oh, that kid? I don't know how old that yeah. kid was. That kid was probably 12, 13 years old. Yeah, that's another thing. Jungle Boy held me, and a kid in the crowd punched me as hard as he could in the stomach. That's what killed Houdini, as somebody else noted. Oh, And that was no DQ. How come that well, wasn't disqualification? That was outside interference. You should be happy somebody didn't punch you in the throat for all the mess that you were talking before that match started. Who who were you to take the mic and cut a, you know, start doing a show on those people? Because those those children were insubordinate. And I hope oh. I hope that child was suspended as a result of that act. 
Go ahead, Jim. Well, the thing about it is, I always thought there was a rule that the wrestlers didn't touch the crowd. And the crowd so did I. The wrestlers. Yeah, what happened to that rule? Not only the crowd, practically infants. What do you... Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. Huh. Hey, did you watch the Impact pay-per-view last night? I did not see it. What what all happened? Well, I just uh, I was told the women's match, the Gail Kim Tessa match. This person said he thought it was the best match he'd ever seen from either of them in their entire careers. Wow. Well, I heard good things about it too, but I didn't get to see it. I maybe maybe it's online. I can catch it online. Hey, maybe we'll get a replay, Fight TV or something. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll take care. Hey, thanks so much, Jim. I wonder if we'll get Tessa Blanchard against uh, Sienna Allison K, who I still believe is with with Impact down the line there for the NWA World Women's Title now. Maybe. Let's go to the phones. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey, y'all. Speaking of the NWA, it's Ian from San Antonio, and uh, I want to tell everybody out there that if you have not watched the 2019 Crockett Cup, you're missing out, man. I tell you what. Someone said, oh, like I saw a comment, somebody wrote, it was like, if you took like kind of like a Jim Cracker promotions show and you put it into a time capsule and loaded it up with 2019 wrestlers, this is what it looked, well, I guess the Rock and Roll Express are not 2019 wrestlers. Yeah, they but, are. I wrestled them last else, year. It's a great, yeah, well, you did wrestle them last year, and uh, they beat you, unfortunately for you. And um, But it was such a great show. It was a wonderful show. And uh, that main event, that was just my kind of wrestling, you know, just real old school, gritty wrestling with great commentary, by the way. Jim Cornette, Joe Galley, and uh, Ian Riccoboni did a great job. And um, I want you to just do it. Nick Aldis, to me, people are going to, you know, probably scoff at this, but to me, he's the best world champion in wrestling, you know, even better than Okada. Not that he's a better wrestler than Okada, but to me, he's just more like of a all full package world champion, the way that he carries himself to me and the way that he speaks. I guess well, I can't really understand Okada, but still. Let me throw this at Boss Man here because he wasn't here yesterday, and I, I broached this, I brought this up. You take because to me, you got to take Okada and Tanahashi and your Lesners and Rollins. You take that WWE and New Japan out of the mix, and you go with what's left. And what's been left over the past couple of of months and years when it comes to MLW and Impact and ROH and these other places. For the amount of of visibility that he has, Nick Aldis, I think person for person, when you include this incarnation of Jay Lethal, Matt Taven, Low Key, some of the except for Filthy Tom Lawler, I was obviously. just going to say you're digging a you're yes. digging a hole here, baby. And I'll spot you, I'll spot you, John Morrison and Austin Aries. But I think amongst a, a lot, and this is not to insult Cody and a lot of the other people, but I think when you take those other names like Cody and Low Key and, and those guys. Nick Aldis is the best of the bunch. Now, granted, he's not out there. He doesn't get a chance to work as much as those other guys do, but I think how he carries himself, the character, the videos that Lagana's been able to produce, Nick Aldis, I think, when put in there in a situation like he did with Marty uh, Skrull on Saturday night, really does actually rise up to a certain level. And I think, you know, person for person, even though he doesn't get the visibility, he's as good as anybody else. I don't know what you think about that, but Nick Aldis is the bigger awesome. names out. Yeah, he's fantastic. He is, he is a he is a great he's a he's a very good wrestler. He is a great promo and he is a great champion. He is he is a person who you can make the champion and he can carry himself as the champion. He's he's tremendous. I love Nick Aldis. He's got a good Tully Rick mix, and we'll see what happens with his with the Camilla Kane Camille character if she's going to be remaining with him after he ordered her out of the ring on, on Saturday night and everything. But like that act together, that whole deal works, and, and him being involved more in an ROA or wherever, just involved on more cards will be really really nice. This person here says, imagine thinking the main roster will pull off a Money in the Bank match with Lars in it like NXT did. No, it's probably not going to be as good as that match, smart ass. But the point is, that's if you're booking a ladder match, you need a big giant dude in there that's going to catch you. It doesn't matter if it's in WWE, NXT, New Japan. There's a role for the big strong monster in a ladder match. In WWE and I'm sure formula, they'll figure out how to work it. That's it. The formula for their car crash matches are usually pretty good. So I, I, don't, I don't know if that's really going to be an issue at all. This person says they edited out Bray's last name. Incorrect. Incorrect. Hmm. In the original Firefly Funhouse, the word die 
was used. Ah. Vince does not like the word die. No. And so the replay on SmackDown, the word die was removed. He only sort of likes war. So stupid. This person here says, this Cody promo, you guys seen the Cody promo for Double or Nothing? No. I've, I've heard nothing but raves all day. This person calls it the best wrestling promo in a decade. Really? Check it out. I, I've heard <laughs> rave reviews about this promo. I played here on the air, but we don't have enough time. This person here says, this is from uh, Vince McMahon. <laughs> hey, pal, go easy on my boy, Baron. By the way, good idea of Money in the Bank. He's getting it this year. And he swears. <laughs> he he better not get it this year, dude. He better not get it. I'm telling you right now. This person says, does Corbin have heel heat or go away droning heat? I think both may be the same. You're getting confused. No, you're confused. You don't understand wrestling. There is good heat, and that is, you know, it's a gr- you want to see good heat, go back and watch NWA World Championship Wrestling from 88. Look at guys like Gary Hart. He's like the best heel and he's such a despicable human being but like it's not like you don't want to see Gary Hart on the show Gary Hart's like a highlight of the show but you're hoping that this guy gets massacred or somebody gets their hands on him Baron Corbin heat is people turn off the show in larger numbers when he's in the main event you think that's good heat you're gonna run a restaurant you think it's good that people walk out ah I just got some heat baking this cake wrong no Get with the picture, dude. Um, who would you rather uh, watch if you had your choice of one? Baron Gary Hart Corbin? or Baron Corbin? No, no, Baron Corbin or the Latin heartthrob, Al Perez. Al Perez! You kidding me? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, it wouldn't be a show if we didn't talk about some WWE booking. So, last week on SmackDown, Bailey came out and she wanted a match against Becky Lynch. And Charlotte was there. And they got in an argument, and we ended up having Charlotte versus Bailey, with the winner getting Becky Lynch. And Charlotte won that match. Remember? Everybody had a meltdown the next day on this show? So, guess what we got on Tuesday on SmackDown? Oh, Bailey versus horrible. Becky Lynch! Yes, ba- <laughs> What? Well, now, granted, it's a non-title match, but I mean, I mean, if Bailey wins, she should get a championship match. Are we going to have another three-way is it going to be, is, is, is Becky going to have to, like, maybe Bailey will beat Charlotte, who already has a match with, with Becky, and then Becky will say, we'll all face Bailey at the show as well. She'll have three matches on that show, and then the Money in the Bank person can cash in and beat her. I mean, I expect that, you know, Bailey will just lose. It's Bailey. Can't Bailey just start beating people with sticks? Because you're putting her in a position to just be booed. And can we just get her booed all the time? People want to boo her. Well, the her. problem with your theory is she was cheered last week. <sighs> she was only booed on Raw. Then she came out on SmackDown and stood up to her for herself, and they cheered her. I don't know because about Because, you know, Becky. when you stand up for yourself, people cheer you. Well, you deserve it. They haven't figured know. that out yet. They don't know how to book a baby face. But, yeah, that's the match tomorrow. Becky Lynch versus Bailey. You know, there's Jordan Grace against uh, Chihiro Hashimoto and Mako Satomura against Sari floating around from Sendai. I would, I, would, I would do a YouTube search on those folks. Well, you should do a YouTube search on Brian Alvarez versus Jungle Boy, everybody. Or go to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, if you want to check it out. And we're out of time here today. I want to thank you all for listening. have a lot of stuff to talk about tomorrow because Raw will be over, so check it out here. Every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. And the Saturday replay is now going up on Sirius Satellite Radio as well, so you can check that out. And we're out of time, everybody. We'll talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.